Hey everybody, I'm Megan Zeckman with Education Possible, and today is Teen Book Club. We are talking about QBQ, the question behind the question, by John Miller, and how it relates to teens and why teens should be reading it. I'm going to go ahead and flip around. Hey everybody, again I'm Megan Zeckman, and I am with Education Possible, and I blog over there with my partner Susan Williams, and we talk all about middle school and high school homeschooling. And so we've been doing a book club together for a lot of years. I don't even remember how many years. And we've done a lot of classics and we've done some current books. And so my teens are always reading. And I decided this year that I wanted to do some more this coming year, I'm scheduling a lot of business type books into our lessons, especially into Abigail's. Uh, she's going in eighth grade because there are a lot of relevant books out there for business people that a lot of business people read that are just as current and good for teens. QBQ is one of them. I personally think every teen should be reading this book. So it's um, QBQ, the question behind the question. And I actually had the opportunity to meet John Miller a couple of years ago, and he is just this down-to-earth, authentic guy who is very passionate about people starting to take responsibility for their lives and their actions um, and kind of changing our world that way. Sorry, that was my cat. Uh, so I really was intrigued by who he was. I had never, I had heard about this book, but I had never read it. And so he gave us a parenting QBQ book as well, and so we, um, my husband and I read both of them, and so it's definitely, the QBQ book is definitely one that I want my kids to read because it's all about personal accountability, and personally, I think we don't have enough of that in our society today. We blame everyone for everything instead of saying, what can I do to make things better? And so anyway, the premise of the book is that there are um, questions, the answers are in your questions. And so, not necessarily that there's bad or good questions, but there are some questions that are better than others. And it really comes down to what words you're using and the phrasing that you're using. And so, it's talking about how to make better choices and how to have accountability. So, a QBQ, a question behind the question, starts with a what or a how. So, you'd begin the question with, how can I help? What can I do? to make a difference, um, what can I do to get my, my schoolwork done today, how can I fit everything in before we have to leave for soccer tonight. So you can hear already um, a couple of things that are similar within all of those sentences or questions. One, the word I is in all of them. So you're putting yourself into those questions, you're taking responsibility, and they're all action um, questions. So there's, there's an action attached to it, so it isn't, it isn't this passive voice. Non-QBQ questions are questions that we as a society use all the time, and our teens include it. And they are, I um, want to make sure I get them uh, right, so why, when, and who. So why aren't we going there today? Who left the, who left the socks out? When are we going to go back to the library? Um, why can't I go to my friend's house? So when you use those words in the beginning of your questions and they're not, you know, you're not using the QBQ words, then you're setting yourself up as, you're putting yourself in victim mentality right from the beginning. I have no control over my situation. I need somebody else to come. When is someone going to come? How are they going to take care of it? What are they going to do? Instead of the QBQ questions, oh, sorry, the, what was the QBQ? What am I going to do? And so we want to get these our teens out of this um, way of thinking because it empowers them if they use the QBQs. If you're using the what and the how, you're putting yourself in there. And so then you can make better decisions and you actually take action for things. And that's going to set you... It's going to set them heads and tails above their peers because a lot of people aren't doing this. So, again, um, looking if you're looking for something to blame, you're using the non-QBQ words. You're using the when and the who and the how and the why. The when, the who, and the why. 
and you can hear the difference. So if I, if I give you two sentences, you can hear the difference between the two of them when you use the right QBQ words, the more powerful of the words. So one is, why do I have to take out the trash? So again, it's saying, well, someone else should be doing this job. I don't need to be doing this job. Why is it my job? Instead of saying, um, a better way to say that would be, how can I get my chores done quickly? Um, you know, the one, you're a part of the family, you should have chores and you should be your chores taking out the trash. So you shouldn't be asking, why do I have to do it? Instead, find out how can you do it and just get it done. The other one that I have uh, written down was, as I was thinking through, was when will I get a phone? You know, a lot of teens want all kinds of things and wants and needs are two different things and teaching them that is a bit challenging. So getting them out of this mentality that they not only deserve everything, they should have everything, but getting them thinking about how they should take responsibility for getting things as well. So when will I get a phone? Um, waiting for someone to get me something as opposed to what can I do to earn money to buy myself this item, this phone, or um, this outfit, or this trip, or something like that. Again, it puts them in the driver's seat. They're taking control, they're taking responsibility. And it's very different. It's just a different way of thinking. And so when you go through this book, you, you actually see yourself all over the pages. I don't know anyone who's read it and does not see themselves within the words that John Miller uses. It's a very powerful book. It's an easy read. And what I would do for activities is I would sit down and depending on how your, your teen reads and how in depth you want to go, I would go through a chapter or two and kind of discuss it. Because remember we talked before about once they hit middle school, kids can have all these great discussions with you. Now they may not want to all the time, but they have the cognitive ability to have these um, discussions with you. So you can sit down and talk to them. All right, well, how would you normally phrase this? Well, how can we turn our thinking around and use a what or a how? What can we do to change this um, within both of our ways of thinking? And you can try to see if you can catch one another as well. Not in a mean way, you know, not kind of, you could do like a swear jar if you wanted to, like every time you use the wrong one, but just in a, in a more um, bringing awareness to each other, I think. And having those, having that dialogue, those discussions with your teen is really important. And so if you're going through it together, you're able to have those conversations with each other and it, be transparent with them. They're, they know when you don't use these uh, QBQ words because they hear you talk all the time. So uh, definitely don't go in thinking that, oh, I'm going to fix you because really we all can use reminding of not putting ourselves in that victim way of thinking and using a what and a how and taking responsibility for our actions. So, you know, this book is, is great. It's all about personal responsibility. Teens uh, will get a lot out of it. Parents will get a lot out of it as, as well. I would personally set it up as part of your curriculum. You know, have a time set aside that either you read them to read it together or you read it separately and then come together, but have it be a part of your lesson plans, your teens lesson plans. There are all these leadership, great leadership books. I actually have a bunch of them on the website. I did a post about uh, quite a few of them that I really like. And I think that setting that into your teen's schedule is important. It's showing your teen that this type of stuff is important to me and it's important for you to know. You need to know how to be a good leader. And to be a good leader, you have to have personal responsibility, personal awareness, and you need to take action for things. So. Per, um, in our house, this is going on to our teens book list along with a bunch of others and then I'm going to work through. There are some books that you can do all kinds of really fun activities. This one I think is better suited for discussions because it's so, I'm telling you, it's transparent. You will, you will see yourself left and right in this book and you'll see your teen too, but I guarantee he or she will see themselves as well. So go through these scenarios, talk it through and add it to your teens book list. So I hope you um, are able to get this book and the libraries have it all over the place. Um, I know our library has it. And 
sit down with your teen and get them thinking about their future, get them thinking about being a leader and start looking at some of those business books that are out there that, you know, you may think, oh, they're for you know, older, but why wait? Your teen can read them now. Your teen can understand them now. And as long as you sit down and have the conversations with them about what they're reading. So highly recommend QBQ, Question Behind the Question by John Miller um, for all your teen.